OMG, like seriously? Hi, it's Fifi, and you are like totally tuning in to the Vintage View podcast. And now brace yourselves for the ultimate hosts of awesomeness, Scott and Sam. Like, take it away, guys. Me, yow. Scott, what was that? Have you played Atari today? What was that? Atari? No. It was. I have not played Atari today. Well, have why you? not? Um, uh, uh, um no, I <laughs> I haven't either. But my answer is I don't have one anymore. You know, the sad thing is I have a couple of them and then I have the plug and play, but the only one that works is the plug and play. None of my original ones work. Well, at one point I had two different models of 2600, a 7800, and, um, well, I had a duplicate. So I had, actually had three 2600s and a 7800 and 54 games. And was it 93 or 94? I don't remember which. I gave them to a friend of mine when I moved out of town. And then... I understand that, what, six six months to a year later, I believe, he was telling me that his dad sold them. Ooh. So, at a yard sale for like 50 bucks. Sorry, I'm fiddling with my, mic- my, heads- my, my camera because it's not working right. All right. So, let's get started, I guess. Even yeah. Even though I kind of um- just... Got started randomly with throwing out what I had in mind. But you already told me well, what you have, so it kind of works. I was going to say your history seems a little bit more extensive than mine because, as I've said before, we as a family bought an Atari 2600 about 93, 94-ish. I can't remember the mm-hmm. exact time, but that was, you know, obviously the Super Nintendo and all that stuff was already out. We hooked it up to this really cool wooden panel TV in the back room. As you do in the 80s? And as you do. Oh, wait. In the uh, 90s. <laughs> but we were doing it a decade later. Yeah. <laughs> and that was pretty much it. Was we originally had, I think it was a six switch. And um, I can't remember whether it was or not. But, you know, I used to go through flea markets and pick up the video games and stuff. So we had quite a collection of video games because the Atari 2600 were, you know, the games were quite ubiquitous. And that was something that I really enjoyed. I just, I knew of the other consoles that were on the market at the time. It's just we didn't own them. And the know. Atari seemed like such a cool console. Uh, we had Porky's, which... My mother didn't want me ever playing, but I mean, it's Atari. How are you gonna get anything dirty off an Atari video game? I was I was gonna say, I mean, it's it's not like you're rocking uh, Custer's Revenge, which is a little more suggestive. Yeah. yeah, well, it's not suggestive. It's just outright out there. It, um, um, well, in pixels, it is kind of suggestive. In pixel form, yeah. Um, then we had the. Uh, the E.T. game, which I think everybody had the E.T. game. I think, I think that, they made that, more of those than the consoles itself. I think they did. I really do. I, think I mean, that's, did. that hence the landfill in El Magordo, uh, New Mexico. Yeah. Um, we had, like, Raiders of the Lost Ark. We had Dragster. We had Dodgem. Of course, we had the Pac-Man, which was kind of terrible. Um, you know, we, uh, I mean, we had so many Atari 2600 games because, again, they were ubiquitous. But at some point in time, that was packed away because I had upgraded to the newer consoles mm-hmm. of, you know, the Nintendo type. And it was kind of forgotten. It was just, you know, forgotten and left mm-hmm. in the garage, I think it was. And. As time went by, I always kind of wanted another Atari 2600. So I picked one up quite a few years back from a thrift store. But that time had moved on, and so did the components to where the fact that it just didn't work anymore. 
And then I found another one, I picked that up, and it doesn't work either. So, that, I believe, is the major problem with the Atari 2600, as far as I'm seeing it, is the fact that the components are, they're just aging, and the Atari 2600s, again, in my experience, maybe other people have better experiences than me, they just don't work. Well, the good thing is, is the majority of the parts are off the shelf. So, I mean, you should be able to go ahead and just refurbish it if you really, if you really felt the need to do it. I think there was something called like a riot chip on them that was proprietary. So, I don't think everything. I think the CPU is, is also uh, just a modified version of of the of the main processor that was out there. Um, because the 8-bit guy re- recently on YouTube did um, uh, talked about that the processor that was in the Atari 2600 and the NES. Fun fact, they're variations of the same chip, the same processor, but NES has much better graphics. Better yeah. PPU, I guess. Hey, 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 PPU. Shut up. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I wish I could get mine working. Um, and let's not only talk about the Atari 2600, but I bought a Atari 400, the 8-bit computer, which the problem with that was the fact that it looked like it had been in a flood, and that's mm. my fault for picking it up. Uh, in, I always in wanted that, an 800. Say what? I always wanted an 800. Yeah, uh, I think they use the same games, I think. Possibly. I can't confirm that, but they might. Um, but as far as, yeah, Atari consoles, I've, mm. I've had like three 2600s in my life. Um, yep, I it's... used to, I used to have one of the Atari juniors, the 2600 juniors, but that got lost in a move. And then I picked up the Atari 400 and you're, you're confirming the 400 and 800 use the same cartridges. They're the same family. One's okay, the, okay. one's the more affordable and one's the higher end. Okay. So they're, so I'm they're, assuming... they're the same console, essentially. Okay, I'm assuming the 800 is the higher end. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because the it says here the 400 had a pressure-sensitive membrane keyboard and shipped yeah. with 8 kilobytes of RAM. And the... Uh, where'd it go? Yeah, the, the 800 has a more conventional keyboard and a second cartridge slot and allows RAM upgrades up to 48K. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember the 800 had the dual. Yeah. And they, they both the use cool. the identical uh, processor. Okay. Um, and So, yeah. There you go. The cool thing about the RAM is the fact that it is upgradable. And I believe that recently I saw somebody was making, um, like, modifications to where they were making new boards to upgrade RAM on the 400s and 800s. So it's slotted as far as I re- recall. And it's easy to just pop that out and then pop a new one in and upgrade your RAM. But again, mine doesn't work, and, you know, that doesn't oh, hey. good. That's kind of cool. What's that? It says, the plug-and-play peripherals use the Atari SIO serial bus, which, let's face it, that's going to be Greek to most people who listen. But it says, one of the SIO developers eventually went on to co-patent the, uh, the USB uh, or universal serial bus uh, that we use right now. Interesting. Yeah, that's kind of cool. A little bit of nerdy knowledge for everybody. It's something you'll never need to know, but it's kind of interesting to me at least. And Sam, and now he's oh, a, I know. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. No, Still not hooked up. Okay, yeah. I should but just yeah. put. I just should put that on here as a as a Probably. sound effect. Anyway. Yeah. Um. But yeah, as far as the Atari <laughs> that does work for me is the plug and play. And that's it. But I think if you look back, what got Atari in trouble was the fact that they were loaning themselves out uh, while they were taking in all the games and, you know, not really caring what was put on their platform. And then it's kind of come full circle to where now they're like, hey, if you want to make an Atari console, go ahead, just give us a little bit of money. And, you know, you've got all the flashbacks, you've got all the other stuff. And they do have the newer stuff coming out, which I'm interested in seeing. Um, 
but I'm not sure I'll ever pick one up. Yeah, the I think part of the problem that they had was the uh, when they sold to Warner Communications, okay. and Warner just wanted to do all kinds of like tie-ins and all this other stuff. Um, but Atari was sold in 1976, which was actually to fund the the 2600. Interesting. But they, from what I understand, is um, the uh, the core Atari team were running Atari for the longest time, and then eventually, uh, you know, uh, Warner took over more of the leadership, and I think that's where it kind of went from there. But that's based on what I've been reading about it. It could be wrong. It could be biased. It could be, you know, you know, to the victors go the spoils. You know, I'm pretty sure that, uh, you know, the company that survived is the one kind of writing the... <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, what about that competition they had? Which one? Um, there were like the four cartridges that were all different elements and mm. uh, there was actually like one that they only made one cartridge of and something like that. Uh, I, I vaguely know that it happened. I do not understand or remember the details. I don't, I, I remember it as well. I don't remember exactly what it was as well. I know that there were supposed to be, you know, some prizes and whatnot. And I was kind of like, you know, that would have been cool to be a part of. Whatever. I'm not gonna look it up because okay. it's it's too much digging around on that one. Yeah. But yes, there was one that had four cartridges. Um actually. I'm gonna try something real quick here and see if I can find it a different way. That's not how you Yeah. It is not the Atari two hundred and sixty. Okay, let's try putting Atari into that. I'm being lazy. Atari 2600 contests on Atari Age. All right, let's see. Let me actually. Sword Quest. Okay. Earth World, Fire World, Water World, and Air World. Air World. Okay. And then there was. There, a... there were real prizes they were going to give out for that, wasn't there? Mm hmm. Oh, wow. Actually, I think the fifth one was the one that was... Because it says here there's also the Atari Sword Quest Grand Prize. Okay. So, yeah. Four different prizes. Oh, that's stupid. One guy, The guy who won the uh, Earth World, he melted down the talisman for cash. Wow. That sucks. Yeah. That's terrible what people do. Well, I mean, you know, it happened. So I was I was looking at price charting for one of the games that I had for the Atari 2600 that I did give to my friend. And my jaw dropped for a second because I was looking at the wrong price. I was looking at the new price, which was $1,079.72. But the loose price oh, is $25. But uh, I, I did have Mario Brothers for the uh, 2600. And at the time, I, that blew my mind that I had a Nintendo game for Atari. Yeah, yeah. I think that kind of... The one that blew my mind was Donkey Kong. Because it was a Nintendo character published by Coleco for an Atari console. Was Donkey Kong on Atari? I don't think I've ever yep. seen that. Yep. Yep. Well, I know Coleco did get the license for it. Well, what do you know? It's right there. You are right, sir. That's that's kind of cool. But I know that Coleco actually had the, the rights for it, but supposedly they only had the rights to release it on the ColecoVision, but they were releasing it for other things too, and they got in some hot water. Naturally, yeah. So let's talk about my history. We kind of went over your history of the... Yep. The Atari. Mm -hmm. So in 1986, I was six years old. Um, and it had to have been shortly after 
the release of the console. Um, in the in the early eighties, my my mom and dad used to like going yard sailing. I mean, if I had a vehicle and some money that I could spend, I would probably still be doing it now. But that's different story altogether. Um, we picked up an Atari seventy eight hundred Pro system. And for those of you who don't know about that one, it is this. Had a weird two-button joystick, and it played 2,600 games and the 7,800 games. And that was my first console, and I thought it was pretty cool. It only had the four buttons on the front, power, pause, select, and reset. And pole position two was probably my favorite game in the world for a while until I discovered uh, Pitfall. Uh, then in the process of yard sales and there was a used bookstore in Tucson. Well, there is, it's still there, but it's, it's not the same as it was. They started offering video games in the late eighties and they had like tables of nothing but Atari games and between the yard sales and going to Bookman's and paying five, six bucks for those games each, um, I eventually had, I think at one point I had like 65, 70 more or more games. I can safely say I did have a lot of duplicates. So I actually had 56 uh, non-duplicate games. And I ended up having, like I said, three Atari 2600s, but two different models. One was the 6, and the other one, uh, I believe it was the 4 Switch. Um, and like I said, when, when I was moving from Tucson to another town for my mom's uh, rehab because she was uh, in an accident, I gave them to my friend when I moved. And, well, I already said what happened there. If I would have known now, I would have probably kept it, at least one of them, and it probably wouldn't. It probably wouldn't work by now. But <laughs> true, yeah. But yeah, that's kind of my history there. And um, recently, Atari has put out the twenty six hundred plus, and I'm seriously considering picking one up just so I have a working Atari. And no one can tell me that it's not an official Atari product because it's it's literally sold by Atari. Of course, it literally is emulation. You pop a, a cartridge in and it dumps the ROM to the system and then it emulates it. So multi-carts won't work, but, you know, it is what it is. But at least I could I could use an HDMI cable and connect it to my modern TV. So yeah, that may I mean, be my only bet for working oh. Atari. <laughs> yeah. At and least it'll cost less than a, <laughs> a real Atari. Yeah. Um, uh, should we get on to the black sheep of the, what was it, 5200? See, I never had much experience for the 5200, so that's all you. So, Well, uh, I can tell you the only experience I have with the 5200 is the fact that I have one of the RF adapters. Oh, that is that is my only experience with that. I've never um, played any of them, but I do know that someone from my parents' church had a uh, fifty six hundred or fifty two hundred fifty six, uh, fifty two hundred, and I know the games were w much wider. Yeah, they were actually and like Atari cartridge width. That's the thing. I think it was awesome for the seventy eight hundred to take both the twenty six hundred and the seventy eight hundred cartridges. Because the 5200 seemed as though it turned its back on everything that made Atari Atari. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe, you know, maybe that was a good thing. Or maybe they thought marketing-wise that was going to be a good thing. But it just completely changed the whole landscape. But still, as we can say now, it didn't work for them, obviously. And when they brought out the 7800, that's kind of something that it was like, okay, now we realize we've made a mistake. So maybe we should have backwards compatibility, which was the 7800 the first console to ever have backwards compatibility? Well, what this says for the 5200, it says the CPU and graphics and sound, that is bad grammar on their part, are almost identical to that of the, of the 
Atari 8-bit computers. Though the software is not directly compatible between the two systems, the 5200 controllers have an analog stick, which is kind of cool, and a numeric pad along with blah, blah, blah. Now, it says down here, on May 21st, 1984, during a press conference at which Atari 7800 was introduced, company execs revealed that the 5200 had been discontinued, blah, blah, blah. So it doesn't say it specifically, but it does say that... Uh, um, it was technically identical to the Atari 400 and, and 800, but the but the hardware wasn't wasn't compatible. However, with the with the 7800, it clearly it clearly does say that uh, um, it it does play the 2600 games because I know for a fact because it says here, um, it's. It was released in 1986 as a successor to the 2600 and the 5200. It can run, run almost all Atari 2600 cartridges, making it one of the first consoles with backwards compatibility. Okay. And this is upsetting. I just I just noticed this. Take a look at this. This is the the European version of the 7800. I think I like that controller a little bit better. I do, yeah. But didn't they use that with one of the Atari computers, like the later generations? I don't know. Maybe. You're going to make me look, aren't you? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and while you're looking, I'll explain that, you know, you were talking about a, a game that was that you had was worth a lot of money. Many years ago, I was going through price charting, and I was just kind of remembering different video games that I had. And I had something called... Harbor, uh, Harbor Escape, which Harbor Escape was really just a reskinned River Raid, hmm. but it was sold like for you know the Sears uh, Tele Games and whatnot, which is another thing. We need to touch on the fact that the Atari Twenty Six Hundred isn't just the Atari Twenty Six Hundred; it's also the Sears Twenty Six Hundred Tele Games and all that stuff. And, and I think there was a Mattel one too. There may have been. I mean, again, I go back to it, and I'm like, they just kind of gave themselves out to whoever would pay, and they're just like, yeah, that, that's fine. Um, no, I don't but, see uh, that controller being for anything else. Actually, hold on. Oh, okay. six, 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 oh, that's the original joystick. What? But here's one for you. Here's a here's the Atari XEGS, which was the the console that came out right before your beloved Jaguar. Yeah, that's yeah. a light zapper. To uh, finish up my story real quick, uh, yeah, we had, uh, well, I'm just saying, uh, <laughs> we had Harbor Escape, and one day I checked on price charting, and I swear it said like $100, and I was like, do we still have that? I don't know if we still have that. Uh, you know, again, all of our original Atari stuff was lost to the, you know, March of Time, but I actually saw one of the E, was it XEGS computers? Yep, the one I just showed. Yeah, I saw one of those at a uh, flea market, but that was extremely expensive, or else I would have picked it up, because I think those are fairly reliable, I think. Yeah, but, uh, you think. Yeah, I, until you actually pick but one. But it's, right, it's part I, of the 800, or the 400-800 series, apparently. Okay. So it would use the same games, probably? Maybe. Okay. But I'm glad you mentioned the Jaguar, because I totally forgot about that. <laughs> and That was and like that your favorite honestly, Atari console that you owned. I'm surprised about that. No, you are absolutely that. correct. Yeah, I don't know why I totally forgot. And mine's sitting right here, as if anybody can see. Make my uh, little avatar point off to the left here somewhere. I um, but can't no. do that. You know I, that. I know. But you I'm need, pointing you off need to get here, yourself some anyway. lighting and actual webcam. Nobody wants to see my face. And they want to see um, mine? They're kind of forced to see your face. But regardless, um, I'm going through and pointing here as if anybody could see the fact that I have my Atari uh, Jaguar right over there. And I will rehash the story of a friend of mine picked one up completely in box, brand new, from KB Toy 
I don't know whether we ever called it KB Toy Works, but it was one of the KB Toy Stores. And because they were throwing them out the door, like get them out of here. They are huge, bulky. They're not selling. Get them out of here. So he bought his him and his family one, and then he bought me another one. And I absolutely loved that thing. Absolutely loved it. And I haven't answered your question. The XGS right. is compatible with existing Atari 8-bit family hardware and software. Okay. Because without okay. keyboard, the system operates as a standalone game console with the keyboard it boots identically to the atari xe computers okay so there you go well that works yeah it doesn't warrant the price that it was at the flea market when i saw it um <laughs> but well it it is when you know how many units were actually sold well how many were sold then a hundred thousand oh in the in the gaming console world that's not a lot uh huh. Oh yeah. So maybe okay. that warrants the price. I guess he knew what he had. Maybe, maybe. And now, don't I have egg on my face? It is what it is. Yeah. It's too late to go back now. Dude, don't you have a DeLorean? No, no. Oh. I I wrecked it. Yeah. Oh, because you're driving 87 miles per hour too much. Yep. You just couldn't quite get that extra. <laughs> couldn't quite get it. Unless I was going downhill, I couldn't reach 88. No. So let's we, we talked about some of our, our favorite games. There's one other game I did miss. All right. And it's based on a band. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up and I'm gonna picture here if I can do that real quick here. Don't play any of the music because it's copyrighted. Yeah, well, I'm not going to do that. Um, there's a game that was uh, on the NES, or NES, huh, wrong, wrong company. Um, wrong podcast. <laughs> wrong episode. Oh, wait, did mm -hmm. you say that? No. Um, Spoiler. Hey, man, I'm telling you about the future. Okay, so now let me put this here. So the reason why I'm pulling up a picture before I describe what the game actually is is because it blew my mind when I saw this. View image. All right. So I was at a thrift store, and the thrift store... It was, you know, related to some uh, Catholic high school. It was like way way that they funded it or whatever. But I used to go over to their video game section, which was basically like old computer software. And occasionally it had an Atari game or something like that. And I saw this. Let me make it a little bigger here. Whoops. And I'm like, huh, that seems very familiar. So I just kind of left it alone. And in the same trip, I saw vinyl. And right on the front, the reason why I thought it was, this, it was familiar was that. This right here is the cover art for Journey's Escape album. And this is the Atari 2600 game, Journey Escape. Now, in the game, whoops, what you do is you are a band member, and you're trying to leave a concert venue, and you're trying to escape or trying to avoid um, you know, the shifty managers, the groupies, the paparazzi, all this other stuff, and get your, your tour van to leave. And they're all kind of getting in the way, and you're kind of running running through it. And the music that's playing is a horrible version, mind you, of Don't Stop Believing." And that just kind of threw me off. The game itself is, is okay. It's definitely not the best game, but the reason why it was... Uh, 
it's one of my favorites is because I put two and two together when I saw the album and the game together. So that's an another fun little story I figured I'd tell you. Now, I just pulled it up on price charting. Warrant, warrant. Loose price is five bucks. New price, $63.72. And graded price is $89.94. So it's, it's kind of a run of the mill game, but, you know, there it is. And it was even on one of those weird cartridges. It wasn't the blocky standard ones. It was the one that had like the like the tapered front where you kind of was slightly pointed. That was also the beauty of the Atari 2600 was the variation in the cartridge shapes. Because I remember, I, uh, I'm i going to have to Google this, this Atari 2600 <laughs> game. Um, let's see if I can, I can't even remember what it was called. But it had a, a cartoon ape on it, and it was one of those, it, probably kind of like what you're talking about. It had like the angled corners on it, and they came to a point, and like you had the blocky ones, and then Coleco was like a creamy off-white color. Maybe they were originally white, but, you know, smoke in the 70s and 80s turned them creamy. But it that was one right. of the fun things, Ooh, this... it was the fact that, what's that? I was just saying, this cartridge has seen some better days. That isn't too bad, honestly, though. I mean, in the scope of things, I've seen some that are far worse. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, it's it's not exactly like that one that I was thinking about. Oh, I know, I know yeah. the shape you're talking about. I'm going to pull that up the, right now. The variation was absolutely, you know, I think that made it, sadly, if the console was far better than it actually was, it would make... um. No, not really? that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll try to find an example here. Kind of like the, the Frogger one. Like a 2600 Frogger cartridge. It's a, it's slightly different than I was remembering it. Um, oh, those. Uh, okay. Yeah, the bevels are on the other end. I thought they were in like the insertion. All right, let's do this. To... I'm loading a picture here. Yeah. Bam. Why is this not yeah. loading? Yeah, I was going to say you're not loading a picture. Either this website sucks or I suck. I don't know which. There are the various shapes of the cartridges. That actually, uh, Amadar, there in the bottom, that's the one that I was thinking about. Yep, yep. Okay, okay. Well, that's yeah. the same, almost ba same basic shape as the other, but I remember the yeah. ones like like Burger Time up there in the, in the center at the top. Right, yeah. Um, I had one like the Eye Magic. I think it was like a firefighter game. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm I'm remembering this wrong, but it was one of my favorite games ever on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. I'm I'm actually Unless intrigued by that three. double ender, as they put it. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen that. Yeah, goes both ways. Yep, and Amadar almost looks like a a ripoff of. Uh... Donkey Kong. Yeah, you would think. I, I can't remember how it played, but I remember we, we either had that one or I've seen that one or maybe I own it now. I can't remember. One way to find out. Um. Yeah, I went to Google Images and it's kind of like Burger Time. Okay, you beat me to it, so I'm not going to pull it up. Yeah, it kind of looks like Burger Time to me. Because, unfortunately, it's showing me all kinds of... What the heck? M Dark. Okay, this is for the arcade. I'm just going to pull up the screenshot. I'm not going to pull up the video. Okay. Well, I guess I will pull up the video. Might as well play it and go full screen real quick here. All right, let's see if this works. Yeah, it's kind of weird. The box art makes it look like a Donkey Kong type, but this definitely yeah. doesn't look like it. And I imagine that's probably what they were going for. If yeah. they could 
make it seem like it's something familiar people will go through and be like oh i'm buying that donkey kong game oh that's Why marketing that's, that's marketing right there if there's a similar right. product or something that they could go with they're going to go with it yep we haven't even touched the links my friend but i don't think either of us had one so wrong oh well i'm glad to be corrected for about two hours <laughs> oh <laughs> no um at that at that same Bookman's, um, this time it was in the mid eighties, what maybe ninety five, ninety six, somewhere in there. I was at that Bookman's when they actually had a actual full fledged electronics section. Um, I went into the place and I had a hundred bucks just to blow on something, and I saw an Atari Lynx and I'm like, dude, I like Atari. So they actually had that and three games like for 90 bucks. I'm like, cool. I get it. Go home, buy a bunch of batteries because I think it takes about 15,000 of them. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's uh, six or eight double A's, I believe. I think it's six, but I could be wrong. Yeah. I'll tell you, I was not impressed. I got 45 minutes of gameplay on that. I promptly took it back. And when I took it back, I saw that they had just put the, uh, okay, so this is 96, because I remember now, the CDX that I, I was telling you about in, in last episode, the Sega CDX. So this was 1996, so there you go. But yeah, I, it looked good. It played good. It was kind of cool. You can flip it around. It was uh, right-handed or left-handed, depending yeah. on how you wanted to do it. And it, it, the colors were really nice. The uh, screen looked nice. It was it was technically well. The screen was much better than Game Boy ever thought of being. I thought the cartridge shape was really cool too. Like I don't really, what they looked like they were wafer thin and then had like the curve at the top so you could pull it out. Oh yeah, they were they were pretty similar to the um, turbo graphics and stuff. I was actually gonna say the uh, uh, the Sega Master System cards. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, as a child, I always saw those commercials <laughs> and like they showed the console and then the the cartridge, and I was like, I want one of those, but. There was no way I was going to ask for one because it just wasn't going to happen. Oh, yeah. Not in a million bazillion years. But the battery life on that thing really illustrated why Nintendo decided to go with a monochrome screen. Yeah. I was watching something the other day, and they were ranking the the Turbo Graphics. Um, uh, portable. I don't remember what it was. Turbo Express. Yeah, there you go. The the Game Gear, the Lynx, and the Game Boy. The Game Boy at one point had about uh, what forty hours of battery on on those four batteries. Battery life. I believe. And the others, the other ones, were getting maximum of six hours, maybe ten. Yeah. So while visually. It was it was superior to uh, Game Boy. Technically, I don't think it was because it it just you almost needed to bring a battery pack with you or just a plug and plug it into the wall. Yeah, which makes it not as power, as portable as you would expect. Exactly. Although, I'm sure they had a lighter a car lighter adapter than it's good for the car. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Is there anything we're missing as far as Atari, Atari consoles, paraphernalia, etc.? Um, I can't think of any. I do know that they had some interesting uh, online-related services, but uh, we're not going to talk about those yet. We have something planned coming up eventually. Or yeah, see? Foreshadowing. means you got to keep coming back. I will say, again, like, you know, the um, the flashback and stuff, like... I enjoy the flashback, mm -hmm. 
Um, what was, I have the plug and plays I, that are the Atari uh, shaped controller, and then there's also the um, the larger one, like the uh, what do they call those? They're analog controllers, the paddles. Oh yeah, yeah. I have those. So those are pretty solid if you are into Atari Twenty Six Hundred games. But I do really wish that my original Atari Twenty Six Hundred consoles worked. It's just the fact that they don't. Have you ever tried plugging a Sega controller into an Atari? I can't say I have. No. It works. Um, only one button works, and obviously the D-pad works. Um, I've done it before. Hmm. But yeah, I just thought I'd mention that because that's it uses the same basic connector. So I guess some of the pinout is is the same. I think it's like the B button or something it works as the button. So I don't know. Um, yep. Um, that's I guess we're just tapped out now. <laughs> yep. Again, I kind of briefly touched upon, you know, the newer console. You briefly touched upon the newer console, but I don't know much about it. So, well, there's actually another thing I wanted to mention about the plug and plays. Oh, okay. okay. Which you know as well as I do. But those things you can mod and put a cartridge slot. So you can technically turn one of them into an Atari. Oh, yeah. The uh, the flashbacks. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So this is a fun little tidbit for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, other than that, I'm at a loss for anything other. Any Anything other. Wow. Good grammar tonight. Mm-hmm. No, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm at a loss for any any other content or anything relating to Atari. Yeah, I'm, I'm all Atari out. I'll be honest with you, this episode is longer than I expected it to be. Well, that gives the listener something to listen to. Yep. Uh, we are getting up there in episodes. We are now double digits. All right. Well, people. Tell us your thoughts about uh, Atari down in the comments. But until next time, see you later. Bye-bye. Hey, everyone. It's Fifi. That's like totally it for today's Vintage View podcast. Thanks for hanging out with us. Hope you had a blast. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell for more retro gaming vibes. You guys rock. Seriously. Catch you in the next episode. Peace out.